It's July and we're getting in shape with no equipment needed. Let's go! All right, killer bees, let's go ahead and get moving and grooving. And that means that we're getting started with some arm circles with high knees. You guys, welcome to the workout. I'm Paula B. I'm your best middle-aged fitness friend. And yes, I do like to sing around here. We are all about making peace with your menopausal body by finding a healthy weight and moving in ways that feel like self-love. And for me, a little bit of that self-love apparently is singing, maybe, but also it's challenging myself in new and different ways, you guys. Today, today we are getting in shape and challenging ourselves with something very unusual that I actually really enjoy doing. We are going to go both I'm calling it high speed and low speed, even though truly I want you to go at speeds that make sense for you, for your moderation, for your goals, whatever you want to get out of this workout, that's how I want you to take it. Let's go ahead and do some arm crossers with booty kickers. Because I've got the handy dandy gym boss here, set for intervals of 40 seconds and 20 seconds. Neither one of those is rest, but we're not going fast the whole time. This is what I mean by high speed and low speed. We're gonna take so many of my favorite exercises at a cardio pace and then a balancey strength pace. I know, it's very, it's very different to move the same way at a different pace and really feel your body moving through the range of motion, really feel your muscles moving the way they are intended to move. This, this kind of intention truly is the best way to get the most out of your workout. Let's go ahead and do some welcome to my homes because welcome to my home, my friends. Now here's the thing, I have the, the workout set up so that I'm doing the cardio for 40 seconds and the strengthy body weight balance thing for 20. You are actually completely welcome to go the other way around if that makes more sense for you to be able to keep it moderate. Or, I mean, kind of just don't use the intervals at all. <laughs> Take the whole thing at a pace that makes sense for you. I'm intending to go back and forth between, like I said, high speed and low speed so that we can really feel our bodies working. You know, I know that we would love to just get in shape, you know, kind of on autopilot. <laughs> Right? Like, wouldn't that be amazing? Wouldn't that be amazing if everything that we wanted just kind of came to us easily? But my friends, it doesn't. We gotta work and we gotta think about the work. Let's go ahead and get started with the work, by the way. We're getting started with double knees, which means that we're gonna have our hands up overhead. And we're going to bring our hands down two times to one knee, and then two times to the other knee across your body. This is the cardio pace, so I'm moving at a pace that feels like cardio for me. When it beeps, though, we've got 20 second intervals where we're going to be moving really very slowly, like as slowly as you can without falling over. That's, that's really gonna be the trick here because these are very balancey exercises. We're really thinking about having our core pulled in, really thinking about using the big muscles in our back to be moving our arms up and down, thinking about unclenching our toes and using our abs and glutes for the balance part of it. When we're doing the slow version, you're really gonna feel, here we go, all the work, whew, two times on one side. I'm gonna try and keep my foot flying over here and then we'll switch it to the other side. Whew, on over the other way. Good job. I'm gonna beeps again. We're actually going back to double knees as a cardio version. So it's a repeating, no repeat. It's actually a very repeating, <laughs> no repeat. So two times on one side here, we go back to the cardio pace, two times on the other. So we're essentially doing one exercise for four intervals, <laughs> which sounds terrible when I say it like that. But because we're going back and forth between the cardio and the strength, and because we're repeating it right in a row, it really gives you a chance to think about where every Everything is moving and what everything in your body is doing. So when it beeps again, we're doing those double knees as the balance strength version for the second and final time. And then we're not coming back to this again. This is what I do like about a repeating no repeat is that eventually we do move on and don't have to come back to it. So here we go with the double knees. Really thinking about balancing, really thinking about bringing that balance all the way up into your abs and glutes. Awesome job. When it beeps again, we're doing twisting kicks. Literally exactly what it sounds like. <laughs> we're twisting. And we're 
are kicking. And I've already noticed that even though we're moving at that balancey, slow pace, the low speed, I already feel my heart rate coming up. This is the great news about any kind of work. I know, I know that sometimes you guys have questions about like, what is moderate? Is there like a specific number on my heart rate? Like, is there something really specific that I'm aiming for? Kind of, but also I want you to simply feel your body moving. I mean, that is, that is always my goal. My goal is for you to create a beautiful mind-body connection. So here we go. Twisting, oh, and kicking. Feel how different that feels when it's not fast and you're really thinking about engaging your quadriceps, the fronts of your thighs, to get that kick and really twisting through your abs and obliques. Oh my goodness, very different as strength work. Ah, very happy to get back to it as cardio work. Although I noticed that I'm a little bit dizzy from going back and forth. So I'm actually just gonna stare at the camera and kind of twist through my shoulders here a little bit. Whew, this is what happens sometimes when I go with twisting motions. My friends, I want you to know, whatever you're able to get out of these intervals, out of these exercises, you are getting exactly what you need. When you are moving moderately, when you are exercising in a way that you are really feeling the connection between you and your body, noticing how your heart rate feels, noticing the muscles that you're using, that is, for me personally, the best benefit that you can get from anything. When you are just going through the motions, moving your body the way I am, by the way, when it beeps again, we're doing letter K's, which means that we're gonna have our hands up overhead, bringing one hand down on one side with that same foot kicking out on that same side. On one side of us, it's the letter K right there, ha <laughs> ha, because that's my kitchen over there. <laughs> I, I, at one point in time, I knew who told me that, and I wanna say it was a friend named Lori, but now I think I'm making that up, I don't know. But my friends, my mnemonic device, K, is the kitchen. Not K, right here, is the other side. <laughs> when it beeps again, we're going slow with this. And yes, this means that you're gonna have your hands up the entire, both times through. Feel free to bring your hands down. If your shoulders don't wanna be up like this the whole time, you guys make it work for you. Here we go. Oh, although right now, not noticing my shoulders at all anymore, but totally, totally, feeling that squeeze in the side of my butt. Do you feel that? Oh, I love that feeling. Pull your shoulders blades back and down. That'll take some of the pressure off your shoulders. Bring it down into, here we go, cardio version. When you can bring the work down into your back, your big back muscles, my friends, that's what they're supposed to do. That's why they're big muscles. We have big muscles and little muscles. Big muscles are supposed to do big work. <laughs> Weird, right? <laughs> little muscles are just supposed to help. Your shoulder muscles, like the tops of your shoulders that goes down like into your biceps, those muscles aren't supposed to do that much. When I notice stuff like that, I call them my, I used to call them my curling iron muscles. That's when I used to not have curly hair, which is super funny that I used to not have curly hair. Now I call it my, my diffuser muscles <laughs> because I use my hair dryer with a diffuser and have my hand up overhead. <sighs> Pull your shoulder blades back and down. Do you feel the difference? It takes that work off of the little muscles of your shoulder and your biceps and down into your big, strong back muscles when it beeps again. We're gonna bring our hands down just a little bit. We're gonna do shooting stars. Basically, it's disco dancers, <laughs> but we're also kicking our leg out a little bit. Go ahead and keep your hands a little bit lower for this one. Even when we moved that work into our big, strong back muscles, I totally still felt it in my shoulders. That is part of your brain-body connection, noticing where you feel the work. Not just flinging your body around like the girl on camera, but actually really connecting to the muscles that are doing the work. When you can squeeze your big muscles on purpose, when you can rotate your shoulder blades back and down, when you can bring balance work up into your abs versus in your feet, here we go, balancing on one side. Oh my gosh, how long can you hang there? and then balancing on the other. Still feel this one kind of in the side of my hip here, but really noticing bringing that balance work up into my abs. 
Awesome job, shooting off to one side. Oh, and then here we go at cardio again. I tell you what, I'm kind of, kind of thinking that I should have made a round two on this one where we could do the balance longer. I know, not everybody agrees with me on that one. Here's the great news about balance work. You don't have to do a ton of it to be getting a ton of benefit. When it beeps again, we're gonna do those shooting stars nice and slow, once again, for the second and final time. But here's the thing about everything that we do, about this brain-body connection. The reason it's so good for you to know what your body is doing and where it is moving and how it is moving and which muscles are moving at which time is because, okay, it's something called proprioception. It's your brain-body connection, but in a fancier word. And it helps you stay on your feet. It is something that helps you stay healthy and fit and strong and, frankly, independent. When it beeps again, <laughs> we're doing pretzel jacks. So here we go. Hands are doing jumping jacks. Your feet are doing a little bit of a pretzel. It is also a tree pose, which you're really gonna notice when we're doing the 20-second interval. We're gonna try and get that foot up as high as you can. That might be your shin, it might be your knee, it might be your thigh, it might be all the way up into your business. I am not flexible enough for that. It'll totally depend on your flexibility and your strength. We're not going to worry so much about our arms. In fact, if you would like to take a little arm break on this one or just keep your hands a little bit lower, that's totally okay. I'd like you to think about the balance portion of this. I'd like you to think about pulling that leg, the flying leg, up as high, oh my gosh, which right now I can't, as possible. Really, and forming those, nope, using, I don't know what that was, using those quadriceps muscles right there at the tops of your thigh, pulling from your abs to bring that knee up as high as you can, out to the side as wide as you can, and then here we go back into the cardio version. So much easier to do cardio, right? We're just flinging our limbs around so much easier. And yet, it's hard on your heart and lungs. That's the point of cardio, is to give your heart and lungs a little bit of a challenge. The point of strength is to give your muscles a little bit of challenge. The point of this whole workout is to give your brain a lot of challenge <laughs> to really think about moving at different speeds, thinking about using your body. When you develop proprioception, or the brain-body connection, it will actually help you, here we go, nice and slow, and nice and slow. How high can you bring that knee? When it beeps again, we're going into skiers. Your hands are moving up and down directly in front of you. Your feet are shuffling back and forth underneath you. It will help you, when you have proprioception, to get in shape even faster. You know, I made that promise in the title of today's workout, get in shape fast. It's only as fast as your brain and your body can do this connection thing. Some of us, me, truly me, took years to make the brain-body connection. I mean, and I'm saying that like really generously, <laughs> meaning that it was more than just a couple of years. It was a good handful of years for me to really, truly feel where my body is, what it was doing. Because I wasn't trying, frankly, it was really the problem. When I first started exercising, here we go with skiers. Now I'm trying to actually fly, really thinking about squeezing, this is a little bit more upper body, with really thinking about your big back muscles, one hand going up, one hand going down, really squeezing from the middle of your back, trying very hard not to let your lower back get squeezed and involved in that, using your glutes to fly that leg. Here we go, back to cardio. Awesome job. You notice how easy it was to just kind of arch your back, try and get your arm up a little higher, try and get your arm down a little bit lower, and yet, that work doesn't need to be coming from your lower back. Your glutes are squeezing to get your leg back behind you. Your big back muscles, your shoulder blades are moving your arms up and down. Really thinking about where that work is coming from. It's pulling in your core, making sure that you've got excellent form. That is how, when we recruit the big muscles, I tell you what, they get toned way faster than the small muscles. Here we go, nice and slow on these skiers. When it beeps again, doing one of my favorites. We're doing squat jacks. Just what it sounds like, your hands are doing jumping jacks, your lower body is doing squats. Feel free to go as low or as not low as you want to. 
Today we've got just a couple of, we've got like one, one squat, one lunge. Okay, so when your hands are, when your hands are down, your hips are down. Hands are down, your hips are down. <laughs> Boy, did I have to think about that way too long, huh? <laughs> Good thing we've got a nice long interval for this. Sometimes that happens, you guys. It's been a while since I've done squat jacks. We've had a lot of very knee-friendly workouts the last several months. I, I used to do all squats all the time. I love squatting. It's like my favorite exercise. But I know it's not everybody's favorite, and I want to make sure that you are getting in shape in a way that makes sense for you. If it doesn't make sense for you to squat, don't squat. Some people's knees can't handle it, and some people's knees, here we go with a nice low squat. Some people's knees can't handle it because of that lack of brain body connection, because of poor form on your squats. When you're really thinking about pushing your hips back before they come down, let me show you. So back before they come down, here we come back to the cardio version. Hands are up, hips are up, hands are down, hips are down. Ooh, doggies, I got sweaty on this one, how about you? I also find myself kind of unintentionally getting into more of almost like a sumo squat here, taking that step out, Whew. making sure that you're squatting in a way that makes sense. No matter how fast or slow we're going, we're still pushing our hips back so that your knees don't come forward past your toes. That is actually how your knees get unhappy with squats. And the reason that we frequently do that is because the big muscles haven't been recruited to do their job. When your glutes are involved in your squats and they are strong enough to handle it, squats don't really use your thighs very much at all. This is a rear chain exercise. When it beeps again, oh my gosh, coming back to cardio because we're done with these squat jacks. We're doing reverse ding-dongs, which means I'm really gonna have to think about it. Foot goes out one way, hands go the other way. Okay, I love this one. It just feels awkward to get started. Definitely gonna feel awkward when we're doing the balance version of it because I don't know if you've noticed, but we've got a little bit of cardiac drift going at this point. My heart rate has come up definitely well in the moderate range and I'm really thinking so hard about my body and where it is that I definitely have kept my heart rate up from that too, you guys. Mental effort, I don't know if you've ever noticed, mental effort sometimes feels like physical effort. Okay, here's the balance. Hands going one way, foot going the other. Once again, using that outer butt, my favorite region to tone, because we don't do a lot of this lateral stuff. Now here's the thing, making sure that you're really squeezing your core, making sure your core is pulled in. Here we go back to the cardio version. <laughs> Could not come up with the word cardio. <laughs> I am thinking so hard about these reverse ding-dongs, you guys. And thinking hard, here's what I was gonna tell you. Thinking hard, like thinking about doing something new, doing something new with your body, both of those things actually burns more calories than doing something that you're super familiar with, super rote, do it all the time kind of thing. Doing something new and different can actually help your body make adaptations. Not necessarily faster, but it has to make an adaptation because of the newness. It's why I did this new version of some old exercises today. You guys, when it beeps again, okay, we're doing something called ski jumpers. Not to be confused with the skiers that we already did. We're gonna bring your hands down and come into like a teeny bit of a squat. It really doesn't have to be a squat at all. The squat is not the point of it. But you're gonna bring your arms back to your hips so that you're really kind of using your triceps. And as you come up, oh yes, we're coming up on our toes. Can you imagine what the work is gonna be like? When we are doing the slow version of this, oh yes indeed my friends, new challenges today, helping you get in shape faster by making different adaptations, keeping it moderate so that this is good for weight loss whew, and good for recovery. You guys, there is so much good stuff in today's workout. This is to me, this is one of my best ones. I love this kind of challenge. Oh my gosh, oh wow. Okay, that was super hard to be up on my toes. And then coming back and really squeezing, 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 feel your triceps getting into the position there. Oh, squeeze. And then up, 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 up. Falling forward. 
<laughs> that was not my best balancing on my toes. And then here we go back. <laughs> Thank goodness to the cardio version, you guys. This is the challenge and this is almost the last exercise. Thank goodness for that. I'm gonna beeps again, doing that slow version again. I'm gonna actually spread my feet just a tiny bit further apart. I think that might've been the trouble with being up on my toes. My feet were just a little bit too close together. And frankly, I don't stand up on my tiptoes very often. So that's just difficult for me in general. All kinds of really good adaptations being made today, my friends. <sighs> Making sure you're breathing, moving at a pace that still feels ha ha ha, moderate. Okay. And then come down, squeeze, 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 when it beeps again. Okay, we're doing curtsy punches, which means that we are coming down into a curtsy lunge, if you'd like to. If you don't like to, just do a step back. Totally okay, my friends. You never ever have to. So curtsy lunges means that we're doing a step back and out to the side. And curtsy punches, really specifically, <laughs> means that we're punching forward. Thinking about having your hand at chest level, punching out directly in front of you. <sighs> great, great job. Getting as low as you wanna go, especially on the cardio version, you might keep it really fast. In fact, I think I'm going to, rather than coming down super low. Oh, that feels a lot better, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it's just a step back and out to the side rather than a full curtsy lunge. Okay, Paula. Okay, this is clearly the better way to go for cardio. And now, oh my gosh. I'm doing that a lot lately. I must be taking much wider steps out. I'm gonna take a big step forward here so that I don't do that again. Oh my gosh. Coming down on a nice low curtsy lunge. Thinking about that arm right out in front of you. Okay, here we go, the faster version. Second and final time. What I was gonna tell you is that when we're doing the slow version, I know, I know if you've done curtsy lunges before, they feel kind of easy. What I want you to focus on in that case is this front punch. Having your hand directly in front of you at shoulder height is unusual. Really paying attention to that can help you get in shape faster, making a different adaptation. Oh my gosh, you guys, what a great job you're doing. When it beeps again, I'm gonna do this, the slow version. I'm gonna try really hard not to kick anything, run into anything, hit my toes on anything. Okay, big step back, all the way down. Really thinking about that front punch, you guys. When it beeps again, we are done, but we're not finished. I've got a built-in finisher. It's literally just one more exercise. There's nothing different about it. We're doing butter churns which means that when your hands are up, your feet are together. When your hands are down, ah, one foot kicks out to the side. When we're doing the slow version, here's what I really want you to think about. When your hands are up underneath your chin, see how high you can get your hands without shrugging your shoulders. This is another one of those tricky big muscles versus small muscles things. We use our small muscles for this all the time. It's why your shoulders feel it. But your shoulders, they're small muscles, they're helper muscles. See if you can bring that hands under your chin, elbows high, work into your back. Your back is much more suited for this kind of work. I know you can kick out to the side. We've done it never, numerous times today, so I'm not worried about that. Okay, so your hands up, and then when they're down, squeeze in there. Without shrugging your shoulders, how high can you get your elbows? Without shrugging your shoulders up. Feel how different that feels when you're using your shoulder blades, those big muscles in your back to do this work rather than those little muscles, which I know we're gonna take over again when we're doing cardio. It's easier to use your little muscles. Did you notice? This is the magic, my friends. <laughs> I'm doing slow work of noticing where your body is. This is how we get in shape fast, you guys. When it beeps again, we're doing that slow version for the second and final time, and this is the final exercise. There's no other surprises, no other finishers, no other nothing. All we gotta do is get through that slow version one more time, and then you have had a really phenomenal workout today. Okay, whoop, oh golly, nope, hands only, okay. And foot only, and bring that work into your back. 
and bring that work down into your butt. It's like you're transferring the power. You're bringing it up into your back, down into your butt. The next time it beeps, that was it. Oh my goodness. That was good work today. We're still gonna do a little bit of a cool down here. We're gonna do some arm circles. I know you've been working your shoulders a lot today. Here's what I want you to do. Just keep it out nice and wide. Really be thinking about stretching out those big muscles that we use. That might mean actually that you come forward a little bit more, kind of pull in from your back to really stretch out your back. If you have a foam roller, you might enjoy using a foam roller today. You will definitely enjoy the longer cool down that I have here for you on screen. It's a little bit more stretching, a little bit more cooling down from this great sweaty work that you did today. So proud of you, my friends. Go ahead and open it up. Ah, there we go, stretching out that chest. Ah, and then pulling it together. Give yourself a hug and a pat on your sweaty back. Oh my gosh, I got sweaty from this one. I, I gotta be honest, when I was putting this one together, I was like, oh, this one's definitely gonna feel moderate. No, that felt just the exact right amount of sweaty to me. How about you? Like I said, I do have a longer cool down here for you on screen. I've also got everything you need to know about weight loss at 50 and beyond. My friends, you did such a good job today. Thank you so, so much for working out with me. Make sure that you click that subscribe button before you go, and I'll see you tomorrow.